All right, so today what we're going to do is do part two of 5.4, which is calculating properties of solids. Um, we left off finding the weight of the cylinder, so we're on to part D. It says if one quart of cleaning solution will clean 7,200 square inches of surface, how many quarts will be required to clean 1,500 cylinders? So this is really a conversion problem, so we need to establish some equalities instead of formulas. So I'm going to find my equalities. So if I read the problem, it says one quart equals 7,200 inches squared and also I need surface area, so 33.6 six seven inches squared equals one cylinder and I'm going to need to cover 1500 cylinders so let's substitute or figure out what we're going to do to attack this problem so what we need to do is we need to figure out how many total square inches we need to cover for all 1500 cylinders so we need 33.67 inches squared because that's for one cylinder and we're going to multiply by 1500 cylinders okay so we'll take that answer and then divide by how much square inches one quart covers so we're going to divide by 7,200 inches squared in one quart. And I go to solve this, go back to my calculator. So I'm going to type in 33.67, because that's the surface area of a cylinder, times 1,500, divided by 7,200, and I get an answer of 7.014. Now, I can't um, get 0, 01 of a quart, so I'm always going to round to the higher whole number. So my correct answer here is going to be 8 quarts needed. All right. Now, next question says, what will the total cost be to ship 200 of the cylinders if the shipping rate is 425 per pound. So again, this is a conversion problem. So we need to figure out our equalities. And so here's our equalities. First of all, you have one cylinder equals four dollars and 25 cents and then you also have the weight of the cylinder one cylinder equals and if i scroll back up and take my answer from 1c which is 3.27 pounds all right now i'm ready to substitute and write out my problem before i go to my calculator so substitute so I'm going to do one cylinder times 3.27 pounds times four dollars and 25 cents per pound and then I'm ready to solve so I enter all of those into my calculator. So I'm going to do one cylinder times 3.27 pounds times $4.25. Oh, and also I need to multiply by 200 because that's how many I'm shipping. So my correct answer here is $2,779.50. All right, 
let's move on to F. F says, if a cylinder for a larger window is cut from the same stock, meaning having the same diameter, must have a weight of 4.25 pounds in order for the window to operate properly, how long must the counterweight cylinder be? So how long they're looking for a new height of the counterweight cylinder. So in order to get a new height, we're also going to have to calculate a new volume. So I'm going to start out with my formulas. So I want weight equals volume times density weight, or D. W, and I know I'm going to need the formula for a cylinder, for the volume of a cylinder again. So V equals I alt 227 R squared H. So those are my two formulas. So let's use some algebra here um, to substitute and rework this problem. So we know that we're going to have a weight of new weight of 4.25 pounds and we're also going to have the same density from the top of 0 0.0259 pounds. So if I plug these into my formula I'm gonna have 4.25 pounds and I'm going to divide out my density. So divide by 0 0.259 pounds per cubic inch. My first formula. Now, my second substitution is I'm going to take my new volume and I want to find the height because the radius stays the same. So I'm going to have my new volume, and I'm going to combine like terms and get my pi r squared, and then solve for height. So let's go ahead and put in our new volume into our calculator. So 4.25 divided by 0 0.259, and that gives me a new volume of 16.4 cubic inches. So remember we're solving for height. So I'm gonna my new formula or my new substitution could be 16.41 divided by and we'll put this in parentheses pi times my radius which is 1.75 inches divided by 2 and I will square that, um, and that will isolate my height. So now I'm ready to solve and to put that second formula into my calculator. So I'm going to do, uh, we'll put h equals up here. So I'm going to do 16. Point four one. Oops, let's put it into our actual calculator. Sixteen point four one divided by, and pay close attention to your order of operations here. So let's use some parentheses. Three point one four times one point seven five divided by two. Close that parenthesis and then square it and close the last parenthesis. So I hit enter and I get an answer of 6.825. So I'm going to round that up to 6.83 inches. Stay tuned for part three of 5.5. Four.